And actually, without um, a healthy brain, you can't change behavior, and then you can't make a healthy body. So I think that um, what I'd like to tell you today is the astonishing amount of uh, new discoveries that are taking place about the intricacies of early brain development, and later too, from infancy through teens, and how they might be impacting both medicine and society. Brain cells will continue to develop and create, and, this, and their connections between brain cells, which are called synapses, are far to go. There's much more development over the lifespan. And those synapses that we have in our brains come in two flavors, excitatory or inhibitory. And actually, that is indeed changing over development. Um, as you can see on this graph. And we can actually now study, part of why I get so excited about this, is that we can actually study real human brain with modern cellular and molecular technology so that I can show you an x-axis here of real humans, not animals, and what their synapses are doing. And what you can see here is that excitatory synapses are actually overshooting during development, especially through term, meaning birth, and early childhood, while inhibition takes a very long time to develop actually. And in fact, this is there for a reason. Well, in order for our synapses to connect, they need to be activated. And actually, you need excitation activity to develop new synapses. And we call this period of development the critical period of development. This is when children can effortlessly and annoyingly learn two and three languages perfectly, whereas we bang our heads against the wall as adults to get something down without an accent. Um, there's an enormous amount of learning that takes place um, in this plastic, so-called plastic development, which goes into the teen years. And I'll get to that my two teen sons. Now, how many of you in this audience have one of these, this species living under your roofs? Great, so you will definitely get what I'm saying here. So I would marvel at their antics of what they were doing, how my two sons, one who was very bright, an A student, seemed to be, despite getting A's, could not seem to understand the rules of the road in Massachusetts, despite the fact it was written in the proverbial sixth grade language. Um, and what about my, the disorganization that these guys had? Um, what was that pile in the bedroom? Was it compost or laundry? Very unclear. And I, I just um, have... I was just marveling, and marveling would be the polite word, tearing my hair out perhaps, and I decided that's it, I have the wherewithal, I'm gonna go back and learn about the teen brain. And in so doing, I discovered there's an enormous amount of neglect of the teen brain as a life stage by medical literature, and only in the last decade have we seen an enormous amount of um, new information about the teen brain. Now you can see that teens are on the shoulder of this rapid learning, which makes them very rapid learners. So do not ever, ever, ever challenge your teenager to a game of memory. You will not be happy with the result. Um, but this is a, like the baby brain, there's an analogy because it's a double-edged sword. And you can see here that teenagers, of course, have a lot more of the machinery to make synapses than adults do. And this actually is, leads to some very interesting and new um, findings. And that is that they can actually get things that they need to know about. They can actually get addicted faster, longer, and stronger than we adults can because they have better synaptic plasticity. And recent research in neuroscience has shown that addiction is a form of learning and memory. It shares a lot in common, which is something I think teenagers need to know, and they do not know this information. I have gone out with some of the information, I'm going to just a couple more pieces of information I'm going to tell you today, to start giving lectures to teenagers in their high schools. And as Dick Knox of NPR put it, this is my missionary work I do in high schools. Um, there are other interesting facts, I'll just share a couple with you, that are somewhat alarming. Alcohol, actually, which affects the synapses there, um, because there's more synaptic material to affect, kids, in, uh, teenagers with binge drinking will have greater brain damage than adults. Likewise, uh, marijuana, or THC, um, affects uh, numerous places in this pathway, and because they have more substrate, their, their uh, effects are more long-lasting. In fact, it can last after getting high. There can be four days of cognitive impairment. So it suggests that, you know, what's going to happen on that test on Thursday when you've had a busy weekend? Um, these are things these kids need to know. Um, <laughs> and then finally, stress, which is a whole other thing, actually modulates learning and memory and cognition and also psychiatric state, obviously. 
obviously, and it's been known that they're more plastic, more vulnerable to stress, that the same amount of stress in a teenager can actually, that does little to an adult can actually cause an increased risk of depression later in life. So there's an enormous amount of information coming out of this stage of development. So then to some, the other part of this is that in addition to these synaptic plasticity, we have um, the connections between the paradoxes that while they're learning really fast, the connections between different brain regions are not as fast as adults. And here's an example um, showing how the brain connects up over life, and you can see on the left that uh, the blue areas are with connected parts of brain, and you can see that it's going um, from the back to the front. Um, so the back of the brain, which is at the bottom of the slide, to the top is the frontal lobes, which are the last to connect. And what do you think the frontal lobes do? They are the seat of our insight, judgment, and impulse control. Need I say more? This process is not done till 20. And look there on the bottom at that age 20, there's a couple of blue, green spots still. And men, males, actually uh, are about two to three years behind females. So that might have been a male. But we really didn't need neuroscience to tell us that, did we? Um, so finally, just to sum this, wrap this up, is that uh, w this is a fascinating amount of information that's coming out that applies to medicine and society. Um, infancy is a time of increased synaptic learning. It is, of course, plateaus super high in childhood. Teens are still great. We're sort of at a plateau. We don't want to talk about what happens next. But um, connectivity is actually coming up. And actually, at the frontal lobes are the last to come online, which explains a lot of the paradox of the teenage brain.